Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is process validation with specific focus on proven acceptable range. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for an outline of our agenda and stick around to the end to get the bonus questions. Our topic, proven acceptable range, is used to meet the requirements of process validation, which come directly from 820.75 and 1345 section 7.5.6. Proven acceptable range in five words, entire data supported operating window. When we conduct a process validation, we have to do process development to understand what process parameters are important and how they interact together. To do this, during process development, we may run multiple design of experiments to understand the process parameters, the variation, and what the correct settings are for the process. As we start to define the process parameters themselves, it's sometimes helpful, actually very helpful, to look at the entire proven acceptable range for the various process parameters. This is the entire range of a specific process parameter from high to low that will still produce acceptable product. While we may not use the proven acceptable range, the entire range, during normal operations, it's very good to have that data documented and understood during the process validation. What happens during normal production is we may have excursions outside of the normal operating window that we have defined. If we understand the proven acceptable range, we can use that data from our process development, from our validation, to accept that product that was manufactured outside of our operating windows because we have supporting data. We found the proven acceptable range. How do I know this is working? Well, if my process requires that I capture the proven acceptable range, I capture that proven acceptable range for those CPPs, the critical process parameters. Second, during the process development, I actually analyze the entire proven acceptable range for each of my critical process parameters. And then finally, that data is captured and it's included in my validation package so I can reference it later if I have excursions during manufacturing. How do I know it's not working? Well, I just, I don't consider the proven acceptable range at all because it's not required by my process. Second, I don't understand the entire operating range for my CPPs, my critical process parameters. And then finally, if I do process development work, I don't formally capture that data within the validation, which I then can't use later to support analyzing deviations and concessions during manufacturing. And now for the three bonus questions. During process development, do we analyze and document the proven acceptable range? Second, if yes, is this captured in our procedure? And then finally, do we also look at edge of failure and do we also establish a nominal operating range or a NOR? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at QMS dot jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.